are back, Puckett and Maven, bringing you the commentary tonight as we have just two days left in COD League Season 3 regular season. Right now, we have Noble. Match point. They win this. They're one step closer. They only need two match wins tonight, Maven. This is the one, though, that they're expected to take. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know we're, we're ones for the dramatic, so we are rooting for a 1-1 one, one day here for Noble. Uh I want to see this go the distance. I want to come down to the last match. Something crazy happening. Round, round 11, game 5, like you said. And uh, a lot's going to come down to the second series. But again, this one's not over yet. We'll see if Justice can pull it back. And Blitz Warhawk should be a fun one. Yeah, I'm not sure their record's in this. I, I believe Cursed actually held the best record in Blitz Warhawk. I know they were like 19-0 or something crazy when I first joined. They were pretty darn good at this map. Now, knowing what Cursed did right on this game type... Uh, what is the best way to play in, in your mind, Maven? Is there any one strategy that is better than others when it comes to Warhawk? For Not really, man. I just think it's all communication. I mean, you need to be constantly talking so you know. Big thing that they do very well is telling next up what they need to do. Like, next spawner, you need to do this. So next up, go right. Next up, hold left. That's a big, big part of it. That way, when you spawn, you're not looking around trying to figure out the minimap and decide what you need to cut off. You're already knowing, hey, I'm holding down the sprint button. I'm hitting left side. Uh, that's a big, big part of it. Then obviously, I mean, all teams do this, but some do it better than others, is just keeping track of uh, who's up, who's down. You know, you know, Karma's last alive. He was mid. Just making sure you have your own base cleared out before you start to push. Absolutely. Uh, communication so key here. It looks like one player did not spawn in in time. Uh, they want to make sure everyone is in the game when the countdown finishes. So we'll get a quick restart here. And Maven, I actually got booted from the lobby. You get I did too. Well? I, uh, okay. I think I just got an invite though. So if you don't, I will invite you as soon as I get in. Oh yeah, Slasher is inviting me, so this may be Noble's host. We'll find out in a moment. Um, but this another thing we can talk about with Warhawk though. It's it's one of those maps too where you you know how you'll see a lot of times on uh, Freight or Blitz. You know, you get that spawn out, you'll decide to oh wait, uh, you know, overextend. You don't really see that too much on this map because the I guess that out spawn is so close to your base you can rotate back so easily uh, mm -hmm. a lot more you'll see just kind of get control of your own side and then kind of work in layers across the map just kind of move in like a just think you have four players across the map in a layer and you're trying to push up typically one player is trying to kind of play sneaks and uh, sneaks and on my squad that was burns off who's the guys trying to make those sneaky plays you'll see eight shot do the same thing for optic on this map but uh yeah you won't see too many over extensions because it's just not really plausible in this map like a lot of the others. Warhawk always one of my favorite maps to watch in any of the competitive game modes. Um, seen some incredible S&D games on this map. Blitz, normally one of the lower scoring maps uh, in that game mode. And I, I wonder who is going to be playing the base defense for each team. Do they have a set guy who only plays defense or are they just going to go with that even spread? It seems that towards the end of the season, they're all working on that line strategy that you were talking about, maybe. Yeah, you shouldn't really have, you're giving up too much to have someone just sits at home. That doesn't work uh, really, at least in my opinion, how much I've watched of it, especially lately. I, I don't think that really works. Uh, I mean, do you have someone maybe that ends up being your kind of designated guy to rotate back first? Maybe to play defense, but more it's just a, who's that guy that spawns out that knows they need to rotate back? Uh, it's more just kind of a team defense thing. Looks like we're waiting. We got Slasher in here. We got Chino, Sender, and Miyagi. Doubt and Bielfire are here. The last man we're waiting on is Twiz. As soon as he's in the game, we will get this one started. Once again, if you guys are just joining us, here's a look at the standings coming into tonight. Of course, we're watching the Noble versus Justice battle, but there is also Optic Gaming going up against Denial right now. You can check out that match also right here on MLG.TV. Optic will be playing this Justice team later on, and Optic Gaming... If they go 2-0 tonight, they have a chance at locking up that number three spot for the playoffs, which is crazy. If you remember three weeks ago, Optic Gaming was as low as 10th place before they made the move out to the West Coast playing from Red Bull's headquarters. That, uh, that West Coast quad host, that'll, <laughs> that'll, that'll certainly help your standings. I, I got to think that uh, played a part of me. Not, don't take me wrong, Optic's an incredible team, but whew, those four playing together, at the same house, that's, I mean, I have the same thing with Curse. That's, it's tough to play against, especially when uh, you have such talented players on each side. Now, what did you think of EG's decisions not to 
go play at the Twitch headquarters. Uh, we saw Dito fly out there. We know Krim was the one who had it all set up. He was offering to pay for the hotel for everyone. And Aches and TP didn't want to make the move. Yeah, you know, I, I try to take EG's tweets as lightly as possible because, you know, especially, you know, when Karma was still on there, the tweets that you'll see from Krim, Karma, and Aches about each other and what what actually happens in these conversations, only God knows. I, I have no idea what was said between these guys. It's hard for me to believe that, you know, EG offered to fly everyone out, Krim offered to pay hotel, and Aches and TP were just like, Nah, I don't feel like it, which is how Crim's tweet kind of made it feel. Uh, I got to think there was other stuff going on for these guys. Mm -hmm. I know this should be the most important thing to them, and I was disappointed all four of them didn't make it out there. But I, I got to think there's more to it than Crim's tweet. I, I don't know. I like it, Maeve. The politician and a wise one there. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, we don't know what really goes on ah. behind the scenes in all these situations yeah, that's, that's a tough one. i mean just think think back to when you know that the falling out with karma on that squad all the tweets from either side it's it's impossible to know what exactly goes down in these situations unless you're involved in the actual conversation all right looks like all eight players are in they should be ready to go i'm scrolling through it looks like we got twiz rock and vector uh sin and doubt all going vector bl fire started with the remington put it away and of yeah, course that's a wise blitz move. we're only going to expect vector play uh, in Call of Duty Ghosts, you're going to expect Vector play. <laughs> but uh, we'll see here. Who do you want to kick it off to start? So close to November. Um, <laughs> I want to get it going here. Let's go. Let's go with Sender. All right. Let's give Sender, Sender some love. But you'll see here, yeah, you basically have, typically you'll have two go right, one mid, one left. That's how both teams have played it out. You'll each, usually see a tactical go out on each side to try and stall their forward push know how annoying those flashes can be but the first two kills are going to go to justice that's going to allow them to move a mid map again a little, little luck there and the timing for cinder as he does rotate mid get a kill he is going to push underneath genus wow and this should be one cap maybe two oh no we get a nice stop there cinder has to pick up one kill that's going to be the first cap to noble all right so cinder rotating back helps out on defense then gets the cap to start this one off i've switched over to miyagi now who's going to be leading the second push here for noble yeah, now, the thing you'll want to watch is what grenades the players like to go with. Uh, a lot of guys like to use smokes, which can be really, really frustrating to deal with. I know how Curse dealt with that was to use tactical. As soon as you see those smokes go down, they start throwing tacks in to slow them up. Right? So if they try to push through that smoke, it makes it just as annoying for them. It looks so far like these guys are mostly running a tactical and a simtex just to try and get kills and slow down the opposition. We haven't seen any smokes out of them yet. Slasher's going to get in for cap number two. And maybe any time you see someone going towards that cap point, I'm probably hopping on board with them. Staying on board with Slasher, just see if he'll get this defensive kill. He will. And now we'll see the attack up at the top of the map. Miyagi was close, but stabbed just short in the bakery. Yeah, I thought he was going to have it. I mean, he had to win that 1v1 there to try and get a cap. We had three down there for Noble. This is going to allow Justice to layer the map a bit. They're kind of stacking mid and right, which is... Leaving a side open, but doesn't matter too much. They know the timing. They know when they're going to have to check because they're waiting for all those players to go off spawn. You saw a doubt he's going to cover kind of this 10 water tower side. And now is going to come the push from Noble as they try to spread across the map. Sender, take it down. Back to Slasher now. Slasher falling. Miyagi, last man standing. That means there's probably going to be a cap coming in. Let's go to him. Sin inside the base is going to run he, right he, by. Oh, oh, no, he gets it. <laughs> and uh, a little bit of time there just delayed him wow. enough not to get it. I thought he was going to sneak it around behind, but the player turned right as he was going through. So Sin getting caught in the enemy base. BL fire still attacking. He's going to get cleaned up by a frag as Twiz is also going to be scrubbed. There is a player who snuck by. It's Sin. Are they aware? Yes, they are. Great defense from Noble to keep their base clear. Yeah, super job. And, you know, I think personally that Noble's on the favorite side right now. Uh, I just think there's a lot more routes. It's easier to kind of spawn kill to a degree once you get inside of the base. Okay. Uh, if you hold this side. I know teams prefer different things, but I know for Curse, they play 10 times better uh, when they're pushing towards, you know, Diner and Gina's. Down goes Slasher, up top near the bakery. We're gonna go back over. Let's go to uh, Mr. Chino here. He was running that left side, throws the attack out, and now he's just gonna come from the middle, totally catches his opponent off guard. Miyagi and Chino in the kill feed. Chino with the two pieces looking for the third. And we'll see here if they're able to finally get a capping on the board. Who is that? They have Slasher, he's the one being aggressive. 
no one from Justice has been able to really get anything done. They haven't been able to get any forward momentum at all, just getting outslid across the mid-map. And with Slasher dropping, really no one to follow now, Chris. The only person that's up a bit is going to be down. He drops as soon as he gets close to that flag. Yeah, I'm on board with Miyagi here. Uh, Miyagi is going to push back to this mid-street for the challenge. Player went right around him at the tank. His teammate unable to win that battle. That was Chino who fell. Slasher adding to the kill feed. And there is one defender just staring at that base. Make it two now. Miyagi cut down mid-sprint. Nice try by Miyagi, almost got it in, but it will lead to a cap ultimately there for Noble as they lead 4-0 with 60 seconds left. But dude, what some teams don't realize, and that's it, it's hard to watch at times, is you, you do want a player that kind of plays sneak. You do want someone that's trying to get in, uh, try and go undetected. But what a lot of players do, that's frustrating. I mean, imagine if you're on Noble's side and you're pushing left there by the gate, Chris. You're trying to play sneak, sneak so you to sprint left side of that gate. Don't look, just try to get in behind through American or something. You need, even if you're playing sneaky, you have to keep your head on a swivel. Because if you're not calling out your side, all you're doing is playing sneaky and allowing one of their players to unintentionally sneak by. Right. This is what you'll see players do more often than not. It's just frustrating to watch happen. Doubt is going to get stuck and taken down. We go back over to Miyagi. He was doing the damage on the mid street. One more player will challenge before the half ends. But I don't think we're going to see any more caps unless Miyagi is able to sneak by both defenders who are in the base. Yeah, he's going to have to win like a 1v100 here in the base. Yeah, there's one. He's got him. He gets, oh, yeah, he made a good effort of it, but yeah, we'll close out 4-0. And so far, man of the match, I mean, it's hard to argue. Slasher leading the way in oh, kills 14-8 yeah. and eight also with the two caps. Uh, this is one of those game types where you'll see the Slayers can also do the ejected work, especially strong sub players. What I found interesting was at the end of that round, three players all basically laying down on the spot for Noble. They're so worried about defense, do not want to give up any last second points going into side number two. They knew they needed to take advantage of that bottom side of the map, now playing top down. Let's see if they're able to keep the scores rallying in. As Twiz apparently is sniping off the brick to get that guy that goes mid-map, uh, I think we'll see that go away pretty quickly as he does already have the sub out. But uh, that's gonna be a couple of kills. This is how it started on the first side. Noble picked up the first two, or sorry, Justice picked up the first two or three, but couldn't really get the map layered with that. They got pushed back pretty quickly. And just like that, Noble answers back, gets two kills, and they're going to be able to push out on their own. Sorry, a little sneeze break. Uh, coming back into this one with <laughs> Miyagi for the moment. And Miyagi, All right. one player to beat in the base, can't get it. Cut down from the side. We're going to switch over to his teammate, Sender. And Sender is going to get cut down. So solid defense from Justice on the start here, not giving up yet in the league. But yeah, honestly, he, at this point, I do not see this Noble team losing. They're simply outslaying their opponents. Well, they have more to play for. And it's tough to beat a team that has more to play for. That's just the way it is in any sport. But uh, yeah, you, like you said, Miyagi had a chance there. There's three types of caps really in Blitz. You know, you have kind of team set up rally caps where you get in there Base, you get the spawn kills going, you get that rally going, you have the sneak cap, and then you have my favorite. I love when there's one left alive. The team knows there's one left alive. Then one player that spawns up to, to stop it, and you have that kind of epic 1v1 within mm -hmm. 10 feet of the cap. Those are always my favorite to watch. But I'm watching Slasher here. He's got one kill in front of him, a second to his right. Not able to punch that through, but he's still crushing. He's already got six kills on this side. And it's not just his shot that's on. I haven't seen him miss a grenade either. Seems like every time he throws that Semtex, it seems to be picking up kills. Slasher's just been on point this evening. We'll see if he can keep it going. Uh, I'm on board with Miyagi for the moment. Miyagi in that one-on-one, -on -one, now gonna bounce back for a second, was waiting on Slasher. And I don't think they're gonna get the cap now. No, he's gonna drop and wasn't able to really clear the way for his teammates, but Slasher, yeah, Slasher drops. They have a guy in the 18 as well as Chino. He's gonna drop. So. Good defensive hold by Justice, but at this point, I mean, obviously you have to play defense and offense at the same time to a degree in Blitz, but if you're Justice, uh, you got to get something going. You know, you're down four, there's two and a half to play, it's plenty of time, but you haven't showed any sign of life yet really in game three. On board, who do you want to watch here? Coming down in the last two minutes and 30 seconds, I think we both can agree this one. Yeah, this, I mean, there's, it's a lot of time for Blitz, but just, you know, you haven't seen anything out of Justice that makes you think they're going to be able to reel off these caps. Uh, I've, I've mostly been watching Slasher just because he's been leading the way in slang, leading the way in caps, and uh, with the series going the way it is, you know, I, I like to see the KD. Sender goes through. 
His second cap going back to Slasher now. 25-13 with the two caps to his name. He's going to find kill number 26 around this corner. Yeah, you saw that guy in post. It looks like he's going to push through the post alley. He calls that out. Cinder is going to push that as he checks loading here. He's got one of the back by white truck. That is not a fight you ever want to have. That peg glitch is notorious for just being so brutal. That player pokes out three down. The all fire lasts alive. He spawns out. That's going to be an easy cap. You'll see there, if you look at the minimap, that's that out spawn we talk about. They spawn in the street there. It's it's not a terribly long rotation, but this is going to open up the first rally we've really seen for Noble. They should be able to punch through two or three. Slasher goes through. Now you can see Chino. He was behind the head glitch for a minute. He's finally going to fall, but right there is Sender sitting on the point. Stopped one, one second before that cooldown finishes. And now Slasher inside a post is going to continue to slay. Going for a six-point spree. Finishes with five. 28 and 14, double positive. And really, it's just him and Miyagi slaying this game. Sender and Chino have been picking up kills when they need to, but nothing huge. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't need to go huge in a KDM Blitz. I mean, as long as you're communicating well, you're closing down whatever side you're coming, uh, covering, picking up those big lane kills, you don't have to have huge numbers. You don't. But when you have someone that puts up figures like Slasher, uh, it's certainly, certainly going to help you with the win. I think he just missed a player pushing yep. through Diner Alley, and that's going to be the first cap for Justice. So they won't get goosed. They will You'll get on the board. Laps. It is mathematically impossible at this point. But, uh, hey, they face a little bit. They got on the board. All right, so no drama yet. Or is there TK and EG a little bit nervous? Noble, one match away from advancing to the season three playoffs. Can they get the big win in their next match at 8.30 against Most Wanted as they close out to 3-0? Maven, I got to ask you, man, MVP of this first series for Noble. Uh... I, I, I feel like Slasher was the one we were kind of focusing the most on. Uh, he just had some big snipes and stuff to lead the way in S&D. I'm trying to think about who crushed. I think it was kind of a really big team effort in game one, the Dom. They yep. were all really getting it together. So MVP, I'm going to say, is the team. The team VP. I like it. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our first series. We're going to try and jump into some of the other streams in between uh, now and 8.30 when our next match is ready. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on MLG.TV slash ESR.